So President Obama spoke at the DNC a few nights ago. Um, it was a deeply hypocritical and sanctimonious speech. Uh, I will break that down in detail for you. So here's the part that got under my skin the most. But more than anything, what I know about Joe, what I know about Kamala, is that they actually care about every American. And that they care deeply about this democracy. They believe that in a democracy, the right to vote is sacred, and we should be making it easier for people to cast their ballots, not harder. They believe that no one, including the president, is above the law, and that no public official, including the president, should use their office to enrich themselves or their supporters. Look, I understand why a lot of Americans are down on government. The way the rules have been set up and abused in Congress make it easier for special interests to stop progress than to make progress. Believe me, I, I know it. I understand why a white factory worker who's seen his wages cut or his job shipped overseas, might feel like the government no longer looks out for him. And why a black mom might feel like it never looked out for her at all. I understand why a new immigrant might look around this country and wonder whether there's still a place for him here. Why a young person might look at politics right now. The circus of it all, the meanness and the lies and conspiracy theories and think, what is the point? Well, here's the point. This president and those in power, those who benefit from keeping things the way they are, they are counting on your cynicism. They know they can't win you over with their policies. So they're hoping to make it as hard as possible for you to vote and to convince you that your vote does not matter. That is how they win. That is how they get to keep making decisions that affect your life and the lives of the people you love. That's how the economy will keep getting skewed to the wealthy and well-connected. How our health systems will let more people fall through the cracks. That's how a democracy withers until it's no democracy at all. And we cannot let that happen. Do not let them take away your power. Do not let them take away your democracy. Make a plan right now for how you are going to get involved and vote. Do it as early as you can and tell your family and friends how they can vote too. This speech is quintessential Obama. Man, that was masterful to watch, and I don't mean that in a positive sense, so let me explain. He he lays out at the end there, like he correctly diagnoses the problem, and then he does a bait and switch, and his solution is the standard nonsense that hasn't worked to this point and will not work. So you heard him. His argument at the end there was basically like, hey, listen, man. I know the system is corrupt. I know the system left you behind. I know, you know, the white whack, uh, the white factory worker, the white factory worker who got, uh, you know, his his wages cut or had his job outsourced. I know that you're down on politics. The black single mother, I know you feel like the government has never been looking out for you. And, you know, but here's here's the thing. They're counting on your cynicism. And they know they can't win you over with policy, so they just want to make it harder for you to vote. So what's his solution to how he diagnoses the problem? He diagnoses it by saying, listen, the system is corrupt and it's leaving you behind. And his solution? You really got to vote, dog. That's a, almost a comical bait and switch. That If, if voting was the solution... Well, these problems wouldn't... I mean, people voted for you twice. <laughs> He's acting like he was never president. They voted for you twice and then Trump won. What does that tell you? I know that you want to think your legacy is pristine and amazing and immaculate. 
Well, if it was, there wouldn't have been a Donald Trump. Now, I get it. Everybody wants to just pawn off Trump's victory to they're all irredeemable, racist, bigot, deplorables, and that's why he won, and that's the end of the conversation. But that's a mighty convenient narrative, isn't it? The good people were doing good things, and then the bad people came along and, and elected the bad guy, and now the bad guy's doing bad things. The world is not that simple. One of the main reasons why Donald Trump won was because of his fake populism. Going to the Rust Belt saying, I'm not going to let your job be outsourced. I'm going to protect your job. As Hillary Clinton was running as a continuation of the status quo and a continuation of the trade deals. Obama was pushing for TPP during the election, during the 2016 election. You want to reflect on that? Maybe that has something to do with it? I think it does. You think maybe it has something to do with it that Obama did the Wall Street bailout and then he looked away as they paid bonuses to the same CEOs who bankrupted their companies and crashed the economy. The fact that he could say with a straight face that, hey man, listen, I know the system is corrupt. I know how much the special interests control it. I know how much you feel like you're left behind. But you got to vote. It's unbelievable. No, people voted for you, and you were a continuation of that corruption, of the special interests controlling government. Guys, Citigroup handed Barack Obama a list of people to put in his cabinet, and he abided. He literally brings up there, he said, um, nobody, including the president, is above the law. You shouldn't use the office to enrich yourself or your supporters. The very first story about Barack Obama after he got out of office, remember this? Was that he's going to give a speech to Wall Street and he's making hundreds of thousands of dollars for it. He just said there, nobody including the president is, is above the law. I'll get back to that one. You shouldn't use the office to enrich yourself or your supporters. You did use the office to enrich yourself. You're getting paid by Wall Street because you looked out for them when you were in power. Oh, you shouldn't use it to enrich your supporters either. Tell me again the stories about Hunter Biden making how much money per month by sitting on a Ukrainian energy board when he doesn't know anything about energy or Ukraine? So Barack Obama and, and, and Joe Biden are part of this swamp. They're part of this system. They're also insiders. And that corruption was exploited by a fake outsider, a demagogue who pretended to be more populist. And they still don't understand and they still don't diagnose that problem properly, or they still don't acknowledge their own failings, is a better way of putting it. And that line nearly killed me, by the way. When Obama said, nobody including the president is above the law. George W. Bush is above the law because you didn't prosecute him. You're saying nobody's above the law. You actively made a decision as president. That I'm going to let George W. Bush and Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld and Paul Wolfowitz and Bill Kristol, I'm going to let them be above the law. They lied us into an illegal and offensive war against a country that didn't attack us. And there were no consequences. H minimum hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians, women and children, died in Iraq. B Obama only goes as far as calling it a mistake. No, 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 it's not a mistake. It was very intentional. And it was a war crime. It was illegal. It's not a mistake. A mistake is when you drop your plate of food. You say, whoopsie! Invaded a country and killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people. Hee hee hee! That's not a mistake. That's how Obama talks about it. Because if you're part of the elite ruling class, it's just differences of opinion. Torture? That's a difference of opinion. Some people are pro-torture, some people are against torture. It's not that it's illegal, it's not that it's unconstitutional, it's not that we gave Japanese soldiers the death penalty in World War II after they tortured our people. It's not that we got these, these uh, torture techniques from communist Chinese manuals on how to torture. No. It's just a difference of opinion. We tortured some folks, as Obama said. The president is above the law. The president is above the law. You know who else is above the law? Barack Obama. You were president, you're above the law. You had a 90% civilian death rate with your drone war. You continued the illegal wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Looks to me like the president is above the law. That's what it looks like to me. See, this is the problem, man. It's all sanctimonious BS. 
it's funny, the difference I feel between the, you know, in 2008 when I heard Obama talk and how I feel now when I hear him talk. Now, I see what he really is. You know, Mayor Pete is a clone of Obama, but now when I hear Obama talk, I think, oh, that, like, what's going on inside is exactly what's going on inside Mayor Pete. Nothing. Vapid, empty, shell of a man. Continuing the status quo while pretending like he's standing up against it. Somehow voting for the same people to be in charge that were in charge prior to Trump will what? Fix all of our problems? No, seems to me like it'll help lead to the next Trump. Because neoliberal corporatism has consequences. It has a backlash. And he even bothered to say at the beginning of his speech, Joe and Kamala care about every American. And they care about our democracy. Did they care about... Did you guys all care about democracy? When at the very last minute, you made some phone calls to Amy Klobuchar and Mayor Pete and got them to drop out for a promise of positions in a Biden administration, so you coalesced and consolidated at the very last minute to stab the populist progressive in the back, the guy who would have gotten us health care and would have ended the wars. Did you care about democracy then? Did you care about democracy when the news came out about how in 2016, they effectively rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders? That's what we learned as a result of their own words from, from the WikiLeaks leaks. Now, what will they say in response to that? Oh, my God. Russia, maybe, maybe not, was behind it. So if you talk about it, you're aiding a foreign power. So www.shh.com. You're not allowed to talk about facts about what we know happened. Because something, something Russia bad. But did you care about democracy back then? Did you care about democracy when they were rigging it and trying to take it from Bernie Sanders? Now it's the sanctimony. Our democracy! Yes, our democracy! Did Joe and Kamala care about every American when Joe wrote the crime bill? And when Kamala was all, look at me, I'm a law and order person. Seems to me like you didn't care about the Americans who smoked weed, for example. Joe locked him up. Kamala laughed at the idea of legalizing weed in like 2014. By the way, how are we ever going to end systemic racism if we don't end the racist drug war? And free all the nonviolent drug offenders. How are we ever going to end the, you know, how are we ever going to end racial injustice if we don't do that? Well, Kamala and Joe are on the record. They're not going to, they're not in favor of legalizing marijuana. Even though, what is it? It's over 60%, maybe 70% of the country now favors legalizing marijuana. But Obama will come out here and give the sanctimonious speech about how they care about every American. Do they care about every American when... Anywhere from 45,000 to 60,000 Americans die every single year because they don't have access to basic health care. The only way to stop that is Medicare for all. Apparently, they don't care about every American because they're not in favor of Medicare for all. You're still going to have deaths because of a lack of health care. Joe's own plan on his own website said, I want to cover 97% of Americans. What about the other 3%? Screw him? Is that, I guess that's your position. Only 97% is his ideal plan. It's not even like he started with 100 and was negotiated down by big bad Republicans 97%. He started with 97%. They don't care about every American. They don't. You don't. Sorry. He does the whole, like, he, he, he runs through it all. The system is corrupt. It left you behind. I get it. I get the cynicism. And then his solution is just vote. <laughs> People been doing it for a long time. Hasn't gotten him that much now, has it? He had the nerve to say they can't win you over with their policies talking about Republicans. <laughs> That's correct. You know who else can't win us over with their policies? Democrats. Because I've seen the issue-by-issue issue polls, and they are as clear as day. The American people overwhelmingly want Medicare for all. They want free college. They want to end the wars. They even want a Green New Deal. These are all things that the Democrats are not going to be for. So you also can't win us over with your policies, which is why... 
you resort to flowery language, platitudes and cliches, and long pauses in between the words you say. A thing that was very effective for you in 2008. But in 2020, you just look like the bullshitter you are. 